All right, today we're gonna to be talking about layers in Substance Modeler. This is a little bit of a heady topic and something that might seem a little complicated at first, but it will make sense in the end and it's gonna be super essential for working with more complicated models and things like that. So definitely something you're gonna to need to know. Going off of what we picked up last time, what we've got here is the clay brush, as you will recognize. And what happens if you create a sphere here, for example, and then you create one here, and these happen to exist on the same layer. What happens is, as you can see, it's kind of fused together. And if you go now to the warp tool, you will see that you can't actually work with them independently at all anymore. Now it's something else entirely. So what's the solution for this? Well, what you can do is put them on separate layers. And first we'll explain how to do it, and then we'll explain what the benefit of doing that is. So now we're gonna do the same thing again. We will put a sphere, and now we'll open the pop-up menu, and right here, this is the button to create a new layer. And as you can see, everything went crazy checkerboardy. That means that we're in the outside of the main scope of the scene. And to understand scope, what you need to understand is this one is a different color than this one and we are currently scoped into this layer. And the thing about scope is that what it does is it focuses on a particular layer or a particular group of layers. So in this case, this is where the little buttons here on this controller come in. The one that's the arrows pointing together is to scope in, the one pointing out is to scope out. And scoping out will, in this case, take us back to the main scene. And now both of these layers are available to us. As you can see, scoping down also changed us to the select tool. And what that does is creates this little blue arrow. And depending on what mode you have for placement setup, in this case, it's the hand mode. So if you come right here and put the cursor on it, you can see that it creates an outline on it. And that means this is potentially the, the layer that we want to deal with. So if you hit the trigger, you can move that one around and it'll do the same here. You can move that one around. And as you can see, they're not connected at all. The reason that that's important is because when you're creating more complicated shapes, you tend to want to layer things on top of the other things and then merge them at your convenience. So a couple of other things to point out while we're in this mode is that if you hold the joystick up on your offhand, it'll create this little dashed line. And what you can do is point to different layers with this. This will give you kind of a representation of what the different layers are and what options you have to select them. And you don't have to press anything if you just release that joystick, now that layer is selected. So if we go to the warp tool again, we're only working on this layer. Whereas if we were to scope down and go to the warp tool there, it affects both of them. Does that make sense? I hope so. So I have a little bit of an example to show you. So let me boot that up real quick. All right, as you can see here, we have a table with some fruit on it. And I use this as an explanation of layers because I think it kind of really gives an idea of the logic of working in layers within groups, things like that. So right now, each of these, if you use the up joystick, you can see that each of these is their own separate layer, including the table and the bowl. So let's say that you want to use this bowl with fruit in it, and you want to be able to manipulate it as a single object. So what you can do is take these objects and individually move them into the bowl. That is my very, very high-tech, very nice fruit bowl arrangement. So now, with that same logic, you can hold this button down, select these, and also select the bowl, and then open your pop-up menu, and right here, you have the option to create a group. It's this button right there. So create group from selection. And now what you have is actually a group that works as one object. Now what's the advantage of doing this rather than just using layers? So say you merged these into one layer. That would achieve a similar thing, but the problem is then you wouldn't be able to manipulate anything individually anymore. Whereas in this case, what you can see is that if we use the up joystick again on the off hand, it'll select this group. We're now within the scope of this group. But because these are still individual layers grouped into a single group, you can actually scope in further to individual objects within it. So you can select this banana from within the fruit bowl. And then you can go to the warp tool. You can say, I want this one to be a little bit more curved. There you go. And now if you press down on the joystick on your off hand, you're scoped into the group. 
and then press down again. Now you're in the global scope again. So I hope this kind of makes sense. A lot of people have some issues with the fact that there's no longer a list of layers for you to work with. And on the one hand, that was nice in medium, but the thing is that layers don't really work in 3D like they do in Photoshop, for example. It's not just a progression of layers on top of one another. These are actually individual discrete 3D spaces within a larger space. So I know that this might seem a little bit intellectual, a little bit uh, nonsensical when you're looking at it from the perspective of bowls of fruit, but when we get into more advanced topics, it's gonna to be an absolute lifesaver. So in the next video, what we'll talk about is more advanced layer techniques, things like merging, things like subgroups, uh, and that's how you're gonna get the same thing as you would get with hierarchies in Adobe Medium. And then we'll talk about the added footnote of resolution as well, which is something that is secondary, but is also kind of goes hand in hand with layers. So if you want to see that, if you don't want to miss it, go ahead and subscribe. If you're getting value from these, I'm so happy to have every one of you here and I can't wait to see you on the next one. So until next time, keep being awesome, keep making awesome stuff.